And now for the Monero development segment. Nice. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We leave price land and we come back to nice, calm development land. <laughs> Nasal. Uh, where there is no... Sure, I guess so. <laughs> just a slow and steady climb up here, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Bali was great um, as, as usual. They gave me a great lead in. I don't know much about the hacks that they were talking about. I did I did see the Twitter thread, which is crazy stuff. But um, I guess today's talk is going to be about um, all about horror wallets. <laughs> and um originally it was in response to um the foundation devs announcement of like um getting some work doing not, not official work from the foundation um horror wallet but just like one of the devs there uh forked the code base and said they should work towards getting monero so this is mainly in response to that but yeah. it also segues in quite nicely to what body was talking about when it comes to security <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all, all, all connected here. Yeah, what yeah. exactly was the announcement with Foundation that they're... Oh, they're, I have a, a tweet put, right here. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll let you do your thing. Explain the whole yeah. thing that's going on. So um, Matt, I believe, is a firmware dev, which is basically they build software. I believe they, they're a firmware dev and they build software specifically for specific hardware. And they work at the Foundation um, hardware wallet company. And they tweeted this right here and it says... I went ahead and set up a fork of foundation devices with some initial issues and bounties. And pretty much what happened is a bunch of um, Monero people hopped on and started creating bounties in the GitHub repo to get things created. Like one of the simple ones was getting the, the hardware wallet to display Monero logo uh, for other bounties revolve around seeds and addresses. And I want to reiterate again, this is not official from the company. This was made by a dev at the company on their private repo private twitter all those type of things it's pretty much the idea is and this is the hardware wallet company that i think seth for privacy works at now yeah so they're working on getting well the community is working on getting this hardware wallet to support monero which is really important for security reasons and all these other things that body touched on at the end of, end of his presentation very cool very exciting yeah and, and there's not much specific to talk about that but i just want to go over like a quick overview of what hardware wallets are and what they do and how you can use one with Monero essentially is what I'm going to be presenting on today. Okay. So the if next somebody yeah. did, like put bounties out to develop, to start developing mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Them. I think uh, don't trace me, bro. Put out one, I believe. And they're like, I think one's like for two XMR, five XMR for things like that. So there's, they're all in the GitHub right now. I can drop the links after so you can go view those and add to a bounty if you want to. Very cool. Very cool. Nice to see. Yeah. So you might be asking yourself, why are hardware wallets important? Why are people funding, getting foundation um, devices to support Monero? They're very important for several reasons. And based on what is a hardware wallet, and like Body said or mentioned, a hardware wallet is meant for, I would guess, people who are not technical like experts and you're able to get an air gap machine, essentially. Right, because Bayou was talking about spinning up a VM and all these other things, and that's really, I would say, more advanced. A lot of people should trust themselves to be. So, hard wallet is pretty much a tiny computer, and it's, it is meant to get you an air gap machine already. So that way, if your computer has a virus on it, hopefully you won't lose all your funds when you're using a hard wallet because it's, it's a separate air gap computer that's really hard to infect with different viruses. Right. But, so your, your private yeah. key is stored on this hardware, which mm -hmm. is not connected to the internet. Exactly. And it, then it's like, it's a very small code base. It has a ton of devs looking at it. Generally, most of the code base is going to be open source. So it's just going to be way more secure than like a big operating system on your own computer, et cetera, et cetera. But there are some differences between them. And they did make different design choices, which I'm going to give you a quick overview of the hardware wallets that work with Monero. So you can oh. make your choices and pick which ones, what attack vector you're trying to defend against, essentially. This is great, man. Great idea for doing this this week. Yeah. So if you, especially after the attack, um, my body, we don't know who's behind it. <laughs> so if you want to, um, North Korea is infamous for their different attacks, specifically involving crypto and fiat. So you want to make sure, you know, your funds stay yours and not some other nation states. You want to pick a horror wallet. There are different ones. So we're going to go over different horror wallets right now. And then 
if you're just looking for a basic protection from like a computer virus, right? You would pick, I would say, uh, Trezor because they have completely open source technology. I think they were one of the first one to support Monero, if I'm not mistaken. And that's the one, a big touch screen, really accessible. But you want to be sure that if you're picking this one, you have to get the Monero, the, the one with the screen, the big screen, because the little one, I believe, doesn't support Monero actually. That Monero T, I want to call it, does not support Monero. So you want to make sure you get the one that looks like this on screen. And a really cool thing about Trezor is that it's completely open source. That means that it all the code is audible, every single circuit. I've actually built one before, and it was a really fun process. You can actually buy the supplies online and build one yourself. So if that's your thing, that's what you want to go with. But the downside is, is that it doesn't have a secure element. Essentially, they're, so it's not going to be good against in-person attacks, generally speaking. But it is completely open source. So if your attack model f focuses solely on computer viruses, which I would say most people's attack models are probably just a computer virus. You know, you, you're you getting a virus on your computer. I don't think most people are going to face a thief in their in their house with a gun, you know, but <laughs> I'm just putting options out there. But if you want to step up a little bit and get into something that offers in-person protection, but does have a, and has a secure element in it, you want to get something for Monero specifically, you want to use something like a ledger. And a ledger has a secure element in it. And, this, and the secure element code isn't open source, but you can do some things to help around that. But it's not like 100% open source. So there are some trade-offs with it, right? So Ledger is also pretty cool. I have both of them. I use both of them. Like, you're, you're going to be fine with both of them, in my opinion. So, you know, not too big of a deal. And how how is using using uh, Monero with them? Um, I personally, there's some issues, in my opinion, with both of them because i it's like it's it's pretty good but it's weird like you can't recover a ledger seed on a different wallet like the seeds aren't compatible which is a little weird but i think that that's just like finer things to work on but i personally find both of them to be really good i use monero gui and they're both like amazing i plug it in it just works you know and then i personally like trezor's big screen but that's like you know finer details but they're fine but like i said one thing you want to be aware of you're not going to be able to use it with like btc pay server that seth worked on if you're accepting payments you can't use it with that currently so there's some small edge cases i've run into but overall like it's like with the monero gui it's like amazing also i use it with feather wallet also and it's pretty sweet too and okay so really the, the, yeah but the only way to really get these hardware wallets up and running with monero is through the gui or feather wallet I believe you can use this CLI tool, but like I'm well, obviously I haven't tried it. Okay. okay. Yes, yeah, so you can use CLI tool. I think Feather Wallet supports it. Monero I'm GUI supports it. You can't it. just natively use the like the the ledger software to get a oh Monero god oh no, and yeah. you wouldn't want to either. You you honestly wouldn't want to because the I think a lot of people don't understand in the community don't understand how amazing the Monero Core Dev team is and how the software is so optimized to be private. That honestly, like, if Trezor wanted to, they probably couldn't even do it natively in their app because it is, it is such a massive project that's been tailor made specifically for Monero. For like Bitcoin doesn't really have any privacy features, so it's sort of just like you plug it in, it works right. But Monero has so many different things, addresses. There is networking things going on, like Dandelion, Tor. Like, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to, right? You you want to use the Monero GUI or Feather Wallet, something specifically made for it. So yeah, unfortunately, you can't. Right, which is why it would be exciting to see uh, a native Monero hardware wallet made for Monero. Oh yes, we yeah. we we have funded. I think two, at least two. I'm going to cover them coming up. <laughs> and yeah. then yeah. this one is the. But the issues with secure elements is that you're trusting the secure element manufacturer essentially, and you, and, you know Monero. You want to be independent. You want to be open source. And what's really cool is that we currently have funded a Monero C signer. And this is a hard wallet that works just using off-the-shelf components. You don't have to trust anyone. You can open source components, and it works as a Monero hard wallet. I think the Monero C signer was funded, I believe, a year ago. And they're making some pretty good progress. I can, I can leave the GitHub, to, uh, the GitHub links for you down there. So this prevents you from supply chain attacks, right? But it doesn't have a secure element either. So if you want to get protection from in-person attacks, you need a secure element, and this doesn't have that. So it's sort of like there are different trade-offs, right? You have to get when you're getting a hardware wallet. And honestly, none of these are probably going to be bad. 
the Monero C signer, I believe, is it out yet? So you would have to wait around for that. But if you're a dev, you want to fund it. Um, it's already been funded. We want to help out the devs doing it. You can I can link to the GitHub links below. But they're just a quick overview of hard wallets. Like I said, you're gonna be fine sure when you get, but there are different design choices that result in different use cases and protection of different things better. Yeah. Um, any questions so far? No, no, no. Keep going. You know. Oh, sweet. So I said, so hopefully from this little quick, I want to keep it short and sweet. I try to do less graphs also. I remember my last one was very graph heavy. It's for the people listening in the spaces, you know. <laughs> I would try to use pictures this time. But yeah, it's really cool that the foundation um, or devs at the foundation devices company are supporting Monero. The community is coming together and getting more hard wallet support because it's really hard actually to get um, support on a hard wallet. It takes years of work. I think Monero is the only privacy coin with hard wallet support actually. So I don't think Zcash has it. I don't think Grand or other coins have any hard wallet support currently. Monero has two, Ledger and Trezor, which is really impressive right now, honestly. And like I said, there there was, a, if you look in the right here, there was a, another project that we funded. Are these Castillo Harbor wallets? Yeah, it, that never happened. I, yeah, it never happened. But it was really cool. Like The website is still up and the graphics are like amazing. It's like, wow, it's really cool. But right now, our best bet for getting one native, like Doug was talking about, is going to be the C signer for Monero. And there's getting worked on right now. And it's like pretty much a fork of the C signer from Bitcoin made specifically for Monero. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I forgot about that seed signer project. So that, it's that's really cool. Yet. And then we also have um I this isn't really a, a true hardware wallet, but you have the sidekick mm -hmm. that Monero Uju is working on. Oh ah, I missed that one. That's based on like a like a phone air gap, right? Yeah, basically turning uh your your old Android phone into uh, a hardware wallet. Oh, how's that? You know how that project's going? I forgot to follow it. I don't know. They've been making pro. I, I don't know. I'm they're... assuming they're making progress. Yeah, it's like it was... slow because I think funding yeah, I don't think and it was everything. Completed yeah, yet. but yeah, the idea being you would you know you'd hold your your private key on this. You know, your old you turn your old Android device mm -hmm. into a dedicated hardware wallet that's not connected to the internet, and then when you go to spend your Monero on Monero Uju or eventually other apps, uh, it would it would communicate with the, the sidekick to sign your transaction yeah that's really cool i think and um bodies cool it, it, mm -hmm. it, like you know because everybody has so 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 many people in the world have an old android laying mm -hmm. around and it could effectively turn those things into hardware wallets i'm sure there's criticisms for why that may not be as secure as using hardware device built solely for that purpose but there's also advantages too, right? You're not mm -hmm. on this list of, hey, I just bought a hardware wallet because I own all this crypto that I'm trying to secure. Rather, you're just taking your old Android device. Nobody knows you have it, whatever, and you're you're turning it into a hardware wallet. I think that's pretty good for kind of like OPSEC purposes, right? Oh, um, yeah. It's amazing. Like I said. You're not um, advertising to the world that, hey, I'm in the market for purchasing uh, a device that could hold all my my crypto, my valuable cryptocurrency. Like you could just do it without essentially buying anything and putting yourself out there. Yep. And then Ledger, Trezor, and Cold Card have all leaked customer data in the past in various ways. Exactly. So what what you're hitting at is really good. Like whatever option you pick, you're, you're gonna be probably fine. Just please don't use like don't put like you know 50 grand in like a, a web wallet. <laughs> like whatever you do, just get it on a separate de device. As long as it's a if, if it's a separate machine you're running a vm in like body talked about if it's an android device if it's a hardware wallet you made yourself you bought from, like just please don't put a lot of money on, on your computer that you're browsing the internet and, and torrenting with and all these other things you're yeah. probably gonna be a lot better off than most people <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm old school guys i just i use paper wallets all right i, I write things really down, write them down once or twice yeah i mean that's that's pretty hard to compromise once you have your your seed written down right makes uh, sense uh, you know, and then did, you, did can, you make you could have your spending funds in a in a wallet um, oh. that's that's connected, right? But you could safely move funds to to a wallet where you just write the C down and you know not have that connected to obviously connected to the internet in any way. Yeah, uh, that's definitely old school. I remember Andreas had the first Bitcoin paper wallet website. That was like what 2011? 2012? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. But I mean, basically, just the concept of generating generating a wallet, right? Mm -hmm. What you know, whether you're using the GUI or the client 
or even something like Cake Wallet, right? And mm -hmm. uh, sending Monero to it, writing down the private the private key, your seed phrase, and then you can delete the wallet, right? Just make sure you wrote down the thing correctly. Check it ten times. Uh, <laughs> make, make two copies, whatever. Maybe put put one. You know, people would argue against this. Maybe putting in a safe deposit box, but you know, there there's everything's got pros and cons. But you know, yep. that's one option. Uh, secure it, right? And yes, I, you're, you're not connected. Like, all right, so maybe you're concerned with the way you generated the the, the seed phrase because you used I don't know something that could have been compromised. But that's a pretty fail-proof way, right? And it gets you up and running very easily. And I think you're pretty secure. I don't know what what do you what do you think of that? Um, like you said, it has pros and cons, but I think that's probably the most accessible one. I mean, everyone yeah probably has pencil and paper, and you probably have a phone. So I think it's pretty good for getting up and running. Like you can't, like I can't hate on that, right? Like it's simple, accessible, right? And then you, 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 yeah. <laughs> spending amounts in a live wallet, whatever, yeah. cake wallet or the GUI or whatever it is, and you can keep Monero sitting there for spending. But you could also have, if you want to, like you know, really store some digital gold. Um, it's a pretty good, reliable way to do it without needing uh, any hardware. Yeah, it's probably the most. Um, your 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 address isn't gonna get leaked either because you did that. You know, your emails aren't gonna get leaked because you're not giving anything to a company. So it's pretty good uh, operational security wise. Right. You know, and then you could obviously you could get more creative. You can etch etch your seed into into metal plates <laughs> and things like that. There's there's yeah. all that. <laughs> um, there, there are ways. All right, man. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Later, dude. Adios.